Hey, what's up you guys? Shardens Prime here, doing another Throwback Thursday action figure review. Today we're going to look at the Marvel Legends Quantumania movie, Cassie Lang Build-A-Figure Wave. Now, I did like the Quantumania movie. I even bought the cup! By the way, I do need to see Blue Beetle, a little tangent there, but anyway... Looking forward to that movie, sorry. <laughs> but this wave is something that I've been wanting to review on the channel for a while. I've had these for a while. Good combination of movie figures and comic figures. And we're going to talk about them very soon. But first, we got to hit that theme song. had these for a while now all right so if you've got them before me well hey we may have gotten them at the same time you know on the side of the packaging you can see how each of the figures aside from ant-man himself has a build-a-figure piece for cassie lang and then on the back of the packaging uh, you can see a product shot of each of the figures over there and then on the other side you can see how all the figures have a nice concept image or some comic book artwork for all the comic based figures all right let's get to it and crack these things open and and if you're trying to get your Marvel Legends, you can do so. Big, big, big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> and here are the figures out of the packaging. And not necessarily my favorite wave. Uh, again, I probably would have reviewed these a lot earlier if I was really enamored with it. But there is some good stuff over here. Uh, I will say there are figures I definitely like from this set. But... For the most part, I'm not particularly thrilled about the wave in its entirety. Anyway, let's get a closer look at each of these figures. Uh, let's start with Ultron. <laughs> so I'm going to be reviewing these least favorite to favorite. And I'm going to start out by saying something positive. I do like the black paint right here within the mouth. That Kirby crackle effect looks good. I do like that. That's very, very cool. However... I don't know why they went with a totally different head sculpt than what we'd seen before. Uh, I like this head sculpt more. This isn't god-awful. It's just a little on the bigger side, and I just prefer this head sculpt. If you know exactly you know, what this refers to, let me know in the comments section. I will read it. I do read the comments. But other than that, and the, and the accessories are the same except for the Kirby crackle effect right here. Thanks to Century Productions for giving this to me because I had lost mine. It's the same thing, uh, just black paint over it, which I do think looks dope. I like that a lot. So this is very cool. And you can just port this into the mouth very easily, even though it's advertised with it, you know, being in his hand. But I don't know what, which, you know, version of Ultron where he holds the energy blast like this or whatever I, I don't get it but he does come with two sets of uh thing grabbing hands he can grab something with those and then he does have uh you know complete set of fisted hands and then one left open hand now the rest of this figure bugs the hell out of me uh i'm very very irritated with this figure because i know hasbro could do way better because they did way better before with the ursa major wave version this is such a better looking figure why would they do this instead of this other than to penny pinch? Oh my god, dude. Whoa, whoa, ugh, oh, jeez. What the hell? So marbling effect throughout on this thing. I hate how it looks. Like, this just really bugs the hell out of me. It's a repaint. It's a worse version of a really good repaint. This, I mean, man, this is awesome. This looks like the vision that, no pun intended, but this does look like the vision that the design team had in mind, and this is just subpar. No peg holes at the bottom of the feet, too. That's just a little bit weird. I don't know why. <laughs> then next we have future Ant-Man. Uh, this antenna is just a little bit bent right over here, just because the way I laid it down. Uh, we have a Sunfire body mold with a brand new head over here and no other accessories except for the Build-A-Figure piece, which is frustrating. Now, this is second to my least favorite because it's a new character kinda, and I have not read the books that have this version of Ant-Man in it yet, so I'm I'm gonna be open-minded and not sell this figure right away. Uh, the pins are bothering me right there. That's troublesome. The paint's a little scuffed right there in the torso and a little bit right over there. 
And he doesn't come with any accessories except for the Build-A-Figure piece. That's just wild to me. But yeah, I would like to read the books that have this character in it and then kind of decide whether or not I want to keep the figure. Because who knows, I may end up liking this version of Ant-Man. A little paint right there. Pretty boring figure. And you get peg holes at the bottom of the feet. I have to give them credit where credit's due. I do like that the butterfly joints are painted out very nicely. And there is paint on the back of the figure too. You have to give them credit there. <laughs> Uh, I feel like the internet's going to punish me for this one, but my third least favorite is the Kang figure. And it's only because of the figure itself is kind of bumming me out. The articulation on this is extremely limited in the arms, and it just makes it not very fun to pose around. I do like the head sculpt. I don't like the size of it. It just looks really, really small. I'll, you know, look, look, <laughs> I mean, come on, look at that next to the Phil Rudd, Paul Rudd, uh, ACDC. Yeah, I get it. I've been playing back in black for my students at work. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, it's a really small head. And I thought Jonathan Majors was kind of a bigger guy, isn't he? I mean, and then look at all the texturing, though. That This looks great. I feel like I'm missing a little bit of paint around the mouth. I'm not sure. But I do like the paint applications and the sculpt of it. Like, the sculpt throughout and the paint throughout looks awesome on this one. I really like how this cape looks over here. I just feel like the figure came out a bit on the small side, and the arms almost make the figure fairly useless. Like, I can't even have him punching Ant-Man into the ground or anything. No texturing on the inside of the cape. Nice, shiny purple paint on the back of the figure, so I do appreciate that. The texturing looks great. We have beautiful pinless joints right here. It looks like he has no muscles at all whatsoever. And yeah, I do like the pa again paint applications and sculpt. I love on this figure. It's just posing them around is just very tricky to do. And as far as his accessories goes, uh, you can see we have wide open hands here, and then you have like a weapon holding hand right there, and then a one fist hand on the right side, which is like, oh, you're gonna break your finger, bro, if you punch somebody like that. Don't do that. <laughs> Now, I really like this wasp head sculpt, or the Evangeline Lily head sculpt anyway. It looks great. The eyes, the paint applications, sculpt of it look really good. Maybe the right eye is leaning a little bit more centered, so could be, I don't know, it's not that bad. If it looks like it's cockeyed, it's not the worst. I really like it. You know, the hair looks good and everything. So I do like this head sculpt. She also has the helmeted head sculpt, of course. We don't have a neck hinge in there for articulation, but I really love how you can see the eyes behind that lens right there. Love the gunmetal gray right over here. So really good looking figure. I just hate that she doesn't have double jointed elbows. That bothers the hell out of me. And wish we had a little bit more articulation over here. But we also have the interchangeable back piece right here so you could remove this and go ahead and give her her set of wings, which is cool. So I do like that. And these are our articulated translucent plastic right there. There's your wasp butt. And we have the waist right here with nice looking paint. And then the wrist guards for her stingers. And really nice texturing throughout on the figure. I do like that. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good looking piece. I do like it. Again, for the head size comparison, right, with the Kang figure, I feel like his head looks just too small, right? I don't know. I really want to like this figure so, so much more than I really do. But damn, I was really looking forward to this one. But this one actually has impressed me. I honestly do like this wasp figure quite a bit. And she has the pinless double jointed knees right over there that make me happy. And peg holes at the bottom of her feet. And she comes with an extra set of interchangeable flat hands right over there. Or wide open hands along with the fist hands that she comes with right over here. <laughs> I can't help but see Dan Aykroyd and Coneheads. When I look at this, uh, it looks good. It just, I don't know, it does look a little Dan Aykroyd looking in the face. Like, even if you cover that up, it kind of looks like Dan Aykroyd a little bit. But anyway, I'm not that familiar, especially on the side right there. I'm not very familiar with Egghead, but I'm happy to have a new character. And I don't know how this happened, but I lost the tie. The tie came out on me, and that bums me out. I have to find it. It went somewhere. I don't know where. These arms, they did come from the Happy Hogan MCU figure. Uh, he doesn't have interchangeable hands, but you can see the torso right there. It's all the Happy Hogan stuff, right? And then you can see the legs right there, Happy Hogan. I like how the blue looks with the brown right there for the shoes. And nothing much to say about the hands, you know, just regular hands right there. I wish we had the pinless joints, though, to be honest with you. He has one gun, which I don't remember seeing this before, so I think this is unique for him. Let me know in the comments if you can point out where this gun came from, but I think it's new. <laughs>
I don't know much about Crossfire, but I like this figure. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I really dig the accessories. I love how the face came out. Little subtle five o'clock shadow right over there. The eye came out looking really good. Deco came out really clean on my figure. I dig this. Now it is reusing the Spider UK body mold. Yeah, it, it, it is. But you know what? While I prefer pinless joints, in this case, it's not really bothering me so much. The deco came out pretty clean on my figure. Can't really complain about that. We got some nice paint on the back of the figure as well. We'll look at the accessories in just a moment. But yeah, it doesn't look too bad to me, man. I'm pretty pleased with how this figure came out. It looks really good. I like the paint apps on this. And he does come with a really good number of accessories. We have this sniper rifle right here, which I think came with a Black Widow figure before. And you get these effects accessories right here that we've seen many times before, and I like having them. I did not port that in all the way, but you know how they work. And then you also get the firing accessory right over there. And on top of that, we get an extra set of gun holding hands. And unfortunately, these do not have the horizontal hinge as they should. Kind of like the Street Humans figure that, that will change. But yeah, wish we got horizontal hinges with these. <laughs> love it or hate it i think this is better i think they did a much better job with this paul rudd head sculpt compared to the previous versions and i'm not even thinking of the weird smirking one like this just looks a lot more like him to me especially if you have him doing some disco dancing or something silly now this right eye does seem like it's a little far away from the nose right i don't know there's something about that right eye just I feel like it should be brought in a little bit more, but I do love the paint applications and especially at three quarter turns It looks a lot more like Paul Rudd to me. I keep wanting to say Phil Rudd We also get an alternate head sculpt of course and you can see on the inside right there We get those eyes underneath the lenses, which I think looks fantastic I absolutely love that that is so cool and the paint applications are really crisp on this figure as well, which makes me really happy. And then you get that! Ah, oh, damn it! Yeah, you get the marbling effect. And it seems like that's like that on everybody's copy. I've seen pictures of this figure around, and everybody seems to have that same stupid marbling effect right there. And I can't stand it. Really, it irritates the hell out of me. I've brought it up to Dwight in person, and it's been noted. We'll see what they can do about it. Nice gunmetal gray right over here, and I do like the texturing throughout on the figure. It does look really good. A lot of variety of textures, nice paint applications, breaking things up. Now, you do get this weird thing with the hands, like the right hand has a pointing finger, which I guess is good for disco dancing, which again, you know, when you see that you know, which again, like when you see Paul Rudd doing something silly, it just seems to work with that head sculpt. But yeah, I like that we're seeing all new stuff over here. Makes me happy to see. This is my favorite of the MCU Ant-Mans. I also like the pinless joints right over there. Looking really good. And then the legs look pretty good with the pinless knees. So I'm liking how this figure came out, man. Looks pretty badass. I like this one quite a bit. And he has peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And he has that left wide open hand right there. And he also comes with a set of fist hands. <laughs> So I think Hasbro crushed it with both of the head sculpts with this Cassie Lang figure. I actually think they crushed it with the Cassie Lang all together. This is the first time we're really seeing the photo real tech on these newly painted figures with a figure this large. I can't remember seeing this done on such a large figure and it looks beautiful. They did a great job with it. The eyes look realistic. The paint around the eyes, the mouth, uh, the touches of detail for the cheeks and everything. It just looks really good. And the hair does not have any paint detail in it unfortunately, so I wish it did. It's sculpted pretty nicely, but you do get ponytail articulation, which I think should be a standard for all Marvel Legends, that if you have a figure with a ponytail, you should be able to rotate that around for dynamic poses and everything. But we also get the helmeted head right over here, and this looks great as well. You have those translucent lenses right there, and I love it, or it's just a translucent visor, and you can see the eyes underneath, and it just looks great. We do get swirling in the plastic right here. That annoys me. I won't stop complaining about it until it's gone. Be rid of it, Hasbro. Be gone, if stupid swirling stuff. Some of you don't have a problem with it. Let me know how you feel about it, you know? Should we all feel the same exact way about everything? I don't think so. We should have our own thoughts. Anyway, there's the back right over there. So yeah, if you disagree with me, all good. Nice texturing and paint throughout the suit on the figure. I do like the purple. The silver looks really good right there in the very center. And then looking at the waist, we get some more silver trim with a little touch of red right over there. And we get the pinless double jointed elbows. 
and some more gunmetal gray. We also get interchangeable hands, so you can see you get a right fisted hand, you also get a left fisted hand, left wide open hand, and then uh, you can hold a thing with this right hand over here, which has a horizontal hinge. All the other hands have vertical hinges, but you can see the texturing right there, and there's looking at the back, nice gunmetal gray, then there's the hips with the purple and everything looking really good. They did a good job with that. Texturing looks good throughout on the figure. So, yeah, very pleased with the pinless double jointed knees. More nice gunmetal gray trim right over there. And then we have the faux Chuck Taylors looking awesome. So, yeah, I really like these a lot. Looks really good. Very good looking figure. And you get peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So, for articulation, I'm going to skip a segment for Ultron. And same thing with the Sunfire body mold here for the future Ant Man. You know, with that new head, it can look up and down. So, that's really cool. And it turns side to side really far down though look at that and then same thing we got the spider uk body mold right here for crossfire and then we have that happy hogan body mold right here for egghead uh, the head will not look up by the way or, or it will look up just a tiny bit barely moves down you get a ball joint right there side to side and good head pivoting still need to find that tie by the way uh but yeah with the kang figure this being all brand new stuff uh, you have a ball joint right there at the head and can barely look down, get side to side motion and some pretty good pivoting. Then the shoulders, man, that is just so restricting having those shoulders all the way out there or not all the way out there, if you know what I'm trying to say. And then you could barely move them forward, barely move them back. You get a bicep swivel, the nice pinless double jointed elbows, the hands all turn side to side and hinge up and down. You get a die or a waist joint right there, waist pivoting, crunches forward a little bit and back a bit. Then the hips do move outward. I like the cuts right there in the skirt, or his shorts anyway, I guess. It's not really a skirt. Uh, you can get him kicking forward only a bit and back a little bit. Upper thigh cut. Double jointed knees that bend in pretty well. Ankles do move down and up and beautiful ankle pivot. And then we have the wasp figure. I think this is all new stuff. Uh, we have the ball joint right there. Doesn't really move down so much. Side to side motion and Decent head pivoting, shoulders move outward above the 90 degree mark, and then move down. And then you can move these wings up and down. They have articulation, so that's cool. I do like that. So without that getting in the way, you can move that at full 360. No bicep swivel, only single jointed elbow, rotates, and it does bend in quite a bit. All the hands turn side to side and hinge up and down. Diaphragm joint, diaphragm pivot, crunches forward a little bit, back a bit, and then you can do the splits with your wasp figure right there. There you go, Scott. And then you could kick forward only that much, back a tiny bit, upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, and then the ankles move down, up, and beautiful ankle pivot. And then for the Ant-Man figure, yeah, just doing them all at once over here. Uh, the head uh, is on the ball joint again, so it is a bit limiting with that range of movement. Down, barely, side to side, good head pivoting. Shoulders outward, rotate a full 360 bicep swiveler, and then doubler jointed elbows, and then wrist swivelers, and they move up and down. And then you get a diaphragm joint, diaphragm pivot, moves forward, back, no waist cut, hips outward, and then kicks forward only that much, back, upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, ankles down, up, and beautiful ankle pivot right over there. And then finally, for the Cassie Lang figure, which is no doubt my figure, my favorite figure from the wave anyway, uh, she can look up and down, a bit side to side motion pivoting i wish you could look down more than that to be honest with you shoulders will move outward at 90 move in that far rotate a full 360 you kind of have to splay them outward just a little bit though when you do that bicep swivel pinless double jointed elbows all the hands turn side to side and hinge up and down except for that one uh which is this one right over here and then diaphragm cut diaphragm pivot moves forward moves back ab crunch right there at the bottom that makes me very happy to see my light had fallen. So with both the ab crunch and the diaphragm joint, she will bend forward that much. It does look ugly on the back. So pose accordingly so that you can't see that because it does look weird. I am happy to have the articulation in sacrifice for or to sacrifice some of the aesthetics for it. You know, I like it. And she could bend all the way back. That's not very realistic, but happy to have the articulation. She will kick forward a bit. Not back that much, upper thigh cut, the pinless double jointed knees, then the ankles move down, 
up a little bit, not up that much. The shoelaces get in the way, but she does have the beautiful ankle pivot. Now to measure out these figures, you can see they're all at about six and a half inches tall for the most part, more or less. But unfortunately, Kang is shorter than both Wasp and Ant-Man. And of course, shorter than Cassie Lang, which stands at about 10 inches tall, looking pretty good. Here's the Ultron side by side once more, and again, the Ursa Major version, just way better than this one right here. If you like this one more than that one, please let me know why. I'm just curious to hear it. And I just wanted to see how this new cooler effect piece looked in this older Ultron's mouth, just to see if I'd, oh yeah, I do dig that. That looks cool. Then here's Crossfire, Egghead, and Future Ant-Man compared to other figures using their corresponding body molds. We have Magneto, Happy Hogan, and Deadpool. And then for a Kang comparison, you can see we have our MCU version and comic version. Por que está muy pequeño? He is so small. I don't know why he's so small. And you can see just a little bit shorter than the comic version. I saw quite a few people do a head swap. And every time I saw it, it looked cool. And it looks like it's going to fit on there perfectly. Oh my god, it does. And by the way, the suit design and everything for Kang in the MCU, I think, is actually quite awesome. I just think the figure is too little. The head fits on, it still looks small. It still does look small. Maybe halving it on there and having it rest it on top of the ball peg with some sticky tack might be better. I don't know. You can mess with it. It's workable. Then for your Wasp comparison, here we have the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie figure, and then here we have the Quantumania figure, and I picked this up off the shelf, noticing that this has the clear lens over the eyes, just like this one does, and I was like, well, why are you such a douchebag? Like, I felt like such a tool getting so excited over this one compared to this one, but then I realized this is a lot clearer. They are not the same. Like, that just looks a whole lot better. You can see the eyes a whole lot better and everything. This is still very cool. I do like the gold on this one, but I think this is a better figure over here. I just got to do a head swap. By the way, they do have the same wing apparatus attached to the back of them. Uh, I just want to see if I can fit that. Oh, it does fit on there. Hey, okay. So if you like this body mold, you like the gold more, you want to put this head on there. Hey, that doesn't really look too bad. I kind of like that. Hmm, this may be a display option for me. We will see. Then for your Ant-Man movie figure comparison, you can see we have the first Ant-Man movie figure right here. And then here is the Ant-Man and the Wasp Cull Obsidian Build-A-Figure movie wave. And then that's the first 10... Or no, this is the Cull Obsidian one. And this is the first 10 years version. And then here we have our final Quantum Mania version right over there. Again, this is my favorite of the four of them. I really like this one too. It has bad marbling in the forehead. Similar kind of way also but much smaller head. I don't know. I like this one the most. And then here's the Cassie Lang. Build a figure next to a couple of Giant Man. Well, this is the Ant-Man and the Wasp Hot Toys Ant-Man figure, which I've been using as a Giant Man figure in my Legends display. Then here we have the Deluxe Civil War re-release, not the Build-A-Figure. This is the second release of this figure right over here. And unfortunately, this Cassie Lang does not fit into scale with either of these. She's too short next to this Ant-Man and too tall next to that Giant-Man. I should have called him Giant-Man, but, well, technically it is Ant-Man, but you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, are they going to make another one? I mean, we're going to get the HasLab for sure. We all kind of knew that for a long while, but I'll continue to have these two in the Legends display. Then here's the whole Cassie Lang Build-A-Figure wave next to one of my Street Humans prototypes. We have the Grayscale Alago right over there. Kickstarter launch is coming September 29th. Go ahead and follow early. Link is in the description below. And then here's all the figures. Next to your average section scale figure, we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Inner Letdown Spider-Man. Whoa, yeah, you're pretty big, but like you're only really big in the quantum realm where everyone was really tiny. So that really means that you never got really <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, show some love to the channel by simply clicking that like button. And if you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We need to hit those one million subscribers. And big thanks to all of you for watching. I certainly do appreciate it, especially with how long it's taken for me to review this set of figures. I've had it for a very long time. I think reviews of these figures started trickling out like four months ago. And what does that tell you, man? I don't like the wave that much. I mean, really, when I lag that long, especially since I've had them for at least a couple months now, it's just not a wave that I was particularly thrilled about. I mean, look, we got two comic characters that I don't even really need. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read some of the books with the future Ant-Man. I don't like the Ultron at all. Egghead and Crossfire, to me, I'm not familiar with either of those characters, but I am happy to have them on the shelf. 
And then Kang, which is probably the figure I was looking forward to the most, disappointed me. I just really don't like how small it is and the limitations with the articulation. The Ant-Man and Wasp figures, you know, impressed me more than I thought I was going to be, or I didn't think I was going to like them as much as I do. And then, of course, the Build-A-Figure, Cassie Lang is my favorite one. So, yeah, uh, just a lot of disappointment with this wave, but I am very happy with the Build-A-Figure. So that is a saving grace for it, but if you can get this, you know, for a cheaper price than regular retail, then I would recommend it, but... Yeah, I'm not particularly thrilled about this set, and at the price point of, uh, shoot, how much is the wave now, like 180 bucks or something, right? For all of them, I'm gonna give this Cassie Lang Quantumania Movie Build-A-Figure wave a sun rating of... I'll wait for the Black Friday sale. And yeah, I think it's one that you could wait for the Black Friday sale, especially with so many characters that, you know, or so many figures in here that just kind of let me down a bit. Just not my favorite wave. And I would like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comments section below. If you want to see the latest in Marvel news, which is not this review right over here, uh, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and on whatnot. And I will catch you guys later. Peace! Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.